Okay, we're going to look now at the role of the vasa recta in helping preserve a hyperosmotic interstitial fluid while the kidneys are in a state of antidiuresis. <clears throat> so the vasa recta is a specialized uh, capillary. You can think of it as a specialized paratubular capillary for the juxtamedullary nephrons. Juxtamedullary nephrons are specialized in creating a hyperosmotic interstitial fluid particularly during uh, the state of antidiuresis, where we're going to use this very hyperosmotic ISF to draw as much water out of the nephron as possible, particularly in the medullary collecting ducts. So the tissue of the medullary kidney uh, needs a perfusion supply. Right? There are cells there. They need oxygen. They're producing metabolites that need to be carried away by a perfusion source. Also, as substances, as waters and solutes are reabsorbed, we need a means to get that back into circulation. So this is what the vasorecta does. The problem is, though, perfusion to the medullary interstitial fluid, that is a blood supply that can freely exchange and communicate with the medullary ISF, poses a danger of carrying away all that solute that the juxtamedullary nephrons are trying to deposit into the medullary ISF to create this hyperosmotic environment. So the solution to this is a countercurrent arrangement of the vasorecta, of this perfusion source to the medullary ISF. This countercurrent arrangement minimizes the amount of solute that will be carried away by that perfusion to the medullary interstitial fluid. And this is how it works. So the vasorecta is immediately following the efferent arterial, which, if you remember, just follows the glomerulus of the juxtamedullary nephrons. The blood plasma, as it is entering into this vasorecta, while we're still kind of in the superficial regions of the kidney here, up in the cortical areas, is going to be roughly uh, isoosmotic to the total body fluid, so somewhere around 300 milliosmoles per liter. As the plasma is making its way down into the medullary interstitial fluid, it's encountering an increasingly hyperosmotic ISF. Because it's a capillary, there is free exchange of water and solute between the vasorecta and the medullary ISF. So, plas so solutes can move back and forth between the plasma and the interstitial fluid. We're only going to look at the movement of solute. Uh, it is interesting to note that there's also an opposite movement of water because water is going to be pulled out of the vasorecta down its osmotic gradient. But just for simplicity's sakes, let's just focus on the solute. As the plasma makes its way down into the ISF, there will be a concentration gradient which will favor the movement of solute from the ISF into the plasma. Okay, essentially loading the plasma of the vasorecta with an increasing concentration of solute. This occurs to a greater and greater extent as the blood is making its way down to the bottom of the vasorecta, way deep down into the medulla. In fact, the concentration or the osmolarity of the vasorecta is, is a measure of its solute concentration uh, will approximately equal that of the medullary interstitial fluid. So it's very concentrated at this point. So without a countercurrent arrangement, this solute that loaded onto the, the capillary could be potentially carried away from the medullary interstitial fluid, thereby reducing its concentration, thereby reducing the medullary ISF osmolarity. And then this would affect that osmotic gradient that's created by the juxtamedullary nephrons. And that would prevent optimal water reabsorption during antidiuresis. So why is it that then the solute does not get carried away and the osmotic gradient is largely preserved? It's because as the blood takes a turn and heads back up towards the renal cortex where it's less hyperosmotic of environment, then the solute begins to unload. The concentration gradient now favors the unloading of solute from the plasma into the ISF. But because the ascending limb of the vasorecta is in very close proximity to the descending limb, as that solute is hopping off and unloading into the ISF, as it's 
ascending up towards the medullary cortex, that solute can simply hop a ride once again back down onto the descending limb of the vasa recta. So any solute that is unloading on the, on the ascending limb will simply load back onto the descending limb and then ultimately cycle around. The net effect of the unloading on the ascending limb and loading on the descending limb is that minimal solute is actually carried out of the interstitial fluid and then back into circulation. Because it's imperfect, there will always be a little bit of solute that gets taken away, but much less so than if we didn't have this counter current arrangement.